It's a lovely image of Anima, isn't it? She is the classic psychopomp. She is the guide of souls. She's leading him out of the dark labyrinth. She's urging him on, but he he can't quite deal with it. He says he was doing terribly academically when he had this dream. And this is the woman that he said, oh, you should have studied. You shouldn't ask me for help. In Freudian terms, I would say that, you know, I believe that this young man probably has a very harsh super ego. But meanwhile, here's this soft part of him, this kind of feminine aspect of him that he was harsh to. And now she's saying, no, all is forgiven. And even though I needed to ask you for help with the homework, I know the way out. Today's dreamer is a a man who's 23 years old, and he is a (laughs) student. Sorry. Uh, Let me start again. (laughs) Don't take that out. Let's just keep going. (laughs) Okay. All right. He's a student of robotics and engineering, and the title of the dream is The Mm. Red World. I'm walking through a labyrinth in the dark. I'm feeling my way along old cobblestone walls until a woman carrying a torch finds me. The woman is someone I knew once. We were friends until I was callous towards her in an argument and we stopped talking. When she found me, I was filled with guilt and I apologized to her. She replied, all was forgiven. She took my hand and guided me through the labyrinth. (laughs) We eventually reach a staircase going to the surface. We walk out into the light and we look upon a barren red landscape like the surface of Mars. She moves out and I follow, but when I look up to my right and the sky is overshadowed by a massive planet as though Jupiter sat right above my head, it stretched across the horizon. I tried to avert my eyes and my friend kept calling out to me that we needed to walk, but I was stumbling and falling. I was nauseated to the point of vomiting. She kept calling out for me, but I fell face first into the dirt, waking from the dream. Wow. Uh, and so here are some here's some context. And he notes, I was in the start of my last year of my undergraduate, and I was applying to join a team for my senior project. At the time, I was overwhelmed and alone. I barely left home and was doing terribly academically. He says, the main feelings in the dream, a persistent searching when I was alone, a mixture of guilt and wonderment when I was with her, shattering awe and nausea when I was under the world. And for associations, he notes, the woman is someone I knew. We were friends once. We stopped talking after she asked for help with homework, and I callously rebuked her for not studying. Mm. So. Super interesting, dramatic, kind of cinemagraph, cinem, cinem, movie-like <laughs> dream. Cinematic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like cinemagraphic, though. I'm sure that in some Just Victorian adding. world, that's what it was called. You know. <laughs> Just adding in some extra syn- syllables there. I go for it. <laughs> so mm. I have I have immediate thoughts. Yeah, yeah. But I don't I don't. I, it seems it. like I often start. You want me to start? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, it's a lovely image of Anima, isn't it? Yes. Kind of classic. This is exactly what we think about. She is the classic psychopomp. She is the guide of souls. She's leading him out of the dark labyrinth Mm -hmm. and up to the world above. And she's urging him on, but he he can't quite deal with it. I also note, of course, that... um, you know, he, he says he was doing terribly academically when he had this dream. And this is uh, the woman that he said, oh, you should have studied. You shouldn't ask me for help. So in, in a way, I, I would, in Freudian terms, I would say that, you know, I believe that this young man probably has a very harsh super ego, mm-hmm. you know, so, or, 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 you know, we might, we might think about that as a kind of uh, a little bit of a kind of persecutory complex in more Jungian terms. It's going to, you know, you, you, you should be doing better. But meanwhile, here's this soft part of him, this kind of feminine aspect of him um, that he was harsh to. And now she's saying, no, all is forgiven. And even though I needed to ask you for help with the homework, I know the way out. <laughs> so it's access to a different kind of knowledge. So I, I yeah. 
I, I couldn't help but think about um, the myth of the Minotaur mm. uh, that I oh, think yeah, yeah. almost everybody's familiar with. Uh, there was a monster down there, and um, Theseus, the hero, had help from Ariadne. Because you can get into a labyrinth, but you can't get out. So Ariadne gave him oh, a ball yeah, of thread yeah. to unroll so that he could follow the thread uh, on, on the way out, and it was dark. Um, it's always dark uh, in a labyrinth, or confusing uh, mm -hmm. at any rate. So here's a woman, his, the Ariadne figure um, in this dream has a torch, uh, and is forgiving, is loving, and Ariadne is a, a classic example of, of the anima, of generosity, uh, help that is substantive, that he uh, is concretized as the ball of thread. Here it's the torch. He needs that. Mm -hmm. um, Consciousness. What's interesting is that they get to the staircase. They go up to the surface. So here he is. We're out of the labyrinth at last. But what is it? A barren red landscape. Uh, like like Mars, with this looming planet like Jupiter, uh, right above right above their heads. And once on the surface, that's where he really can't can't cope. He falls. Mm -hmm. He stumbles. Um, she says, "Come on, let's walk." But the dream ego can't do it. And in the myth. Uh, Theseus abandons Ariadne. He mm. has the contact with her. Uh, she helps him, and he he needs to get the heck out of there after that. And he um, somehow forgets about her and leaves her on the shore. And in this dream, it's the anima who goes on, a and our would be Theseus, mm. uh, dream ego, uh, who who cannot walk. What I'm looking at um, is a little bit different, although I think we're all speaking to the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is on one level, it's a dream about premature emergence. That the dream ego is in the womb, in the dark labyrinth, and the ego is sure that he needs to leave Mm. the container and then when he leaves the container he finds that like a baby he's not even ready to walk that mm -hmm. what's happening in the outside world is enormous and he is so tiny and he finds himself kind of vomiting and crawling on the ground like a baby cheesing and mm. crawling on the ground so this is an ego that is not orienting successfully to the need to remain in a formative place in the brooding, gestating darkness. In that regard, the feminine figure is providing, I think, a corrective lesson in the inner world in the hopes that maybe he can internalize this and make a better decision in the outer world. So the anima, the psyche, is, you're so sure? that it's time to launch, mm -hmm. so sure that you're well formulated, that you've got everything figured out, let's just take a walk outside of the womb and see what that's like for you. It's mm -hmm. overwhelming, it's too big, uh, there's not enough support, it's barren. Well, because when we're in a very young place, we expect the world to be lush and to provide all kinds of things for us. The world isn't going to provide as much for you as you think it should, and you're going to have to walk on your own two feet. And the ego is suddenly um, mm -hmm. struck with the fact that I, <laughs> I'm not ready to walk on my own two feet yet. So I think that there's a, a corrective lesson here that it's okay to slow down. You may need more time to orient and to take the next step and perhaps the world thinks, or perhaps that your heroic ego thinks, you might need some more time to slow down. 
That's one possible interpretation. I, I, I'm not sure, though, because she, the, the anima, is the one who leads him to the surface. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not, I, I'm, I'll just sort of let that hang there for a minute. But I, mm -hmm. I do want to say I'd be curious about this young man's relationship with his father. Mm -hmm. Because we have a vast reference to Jupiter. So it's kind of the world of the father. Jupiter, of course, is the, uh, was the Roman god that corresponded with Zeus. So this is the, the mm. kind of the great father god. And it is experienced as incredibly oppressive, almost weighing down on the dreamer. Yeah, looming. And looming. And, and what, I, what I make up, the story I make up, is that this young man was very much in the, in the phase where he did have to get out. He was in his last year of undergraduate. He was applying for something. He was not doing well in school at that point. Having a, you know, two kids in college, I know that, you know, the beginning of your senior year, and even I remember this, it's kind of scary. It's like, holy shit, I'm going to be done with this soon. And then what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, so perhaps he was at that point. In other words, he, it was time to engage the world of the father, and it was completely overwhelming. And I, and I wonder about the fact that the dream seems to take place on Mars, who, mm -hmm. of course, is the god of, of war. war. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, there's a lot of, it seems like we're finding a lot of kind of mythological references that this is an incredibly archetypal dream. Uh, yeah, Mars is the red planet. Uh, it's barren. And uh, I think a lot of what you've said is, uh, you know, holds true of that uh, emerging <laughs> And where are you in a barren planet uh, with, uh, which is the god of war? Do you have to battle the world? Do you have to battle your, your way, find a way uh, in an awful landscape here? Uh, do you need to have a warlike attitude? And um, I appreciate you uh, associating Jupiter with Zeus. Uh, and and the father, uh, and, and the lack of continued connection with the anima figure that might soften this. Mm -hmm. uh, he falls. Um, and I think, uh, you know, graduation from college can feel premature. Uh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please let me stay in the arms of the alma mater, the mm -hmm. the all mother. Yeah, oh, I liked mm -hmm. it there. Are there other courses I'd really like to take? <laughs> Another thing that I'd like to suggest in terms of the anima teaching him a lesson, I don't think the anima is is so much being benevolent in the way that she can sometimes be but more that there's something that the ego needs to learn mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that the learning is painful. Yep. So in the dream, when I compare the dream to how he treated his friend, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the woman in the dream had asked for help in a class and he rebuked her for not studying. Mm -hmm. And now he feels guilty about it. But I think that the crime, so to speak, the infraction that the woman held was not that she hadn't studied, is that she had the audacity to ask for help. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because what happens in the dream is that he is failing and he never asks for help. Nowhere in the dream does the ego actually say, Help me. Mm -hmm. uh, the soul comes in, escorts him to the surface, although he didn't ask for it. And then when he's stumbling, it's not permitted yeah. for him to cry out and ask for help. Yeah. And I think that's giving us information about what he couldn't tolerate from his friend is mm -hmm. that she asked for help. And I bet coming back to the parental curiosity, yeah. mm -hmm. I wonder if it was okay to ask for help or if yeah. something really yeah. unpleasant or worse happened 
when he did ask for help. Or, so the you know, or lesson it has to be is, like Mars, you know. Or you yeah. get rebuked. Mm -hmm. You ask for yep. help, and the household rebukes you for doing that, for, mm -hmm. for speaking what you need. You know, this goes to your idea, Joseph, about the premature launching mm -hmm. uh, into the world, that sometimes uh, we're prematurely uh, asked to be independent and self-sufficient mm -hmm. and uh, confident and make our way alone. And, you, you know, you, you shouldn't need help. You're a big boy now or a big girl. Mm -hmm. And um, that uh, that's what happened when his friend asked for help. Uh, mm -hmm. It struck that complex of yeah. it must be your own fault for not studying. Exactly. Yep. And yep. Uh, then he can't ask for help. Yeah. And and the anima do, is not there in a way helping him. She just says, "We need to walk." Yeah. So dependency needs were, or, or maybe something that Dreamer was struggling with. Yeah. Walk before you run. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you.